Hi everyone and welcome to this presentation about contact tracing via mobile devices. Um, contact tracing right now is obviously a pretty crucial topic and so today I'm going to talk about a few things. First, I'm going to clarify what is contact tracing, you know, um, and then I'll talk about different approaches that we've seen throughout the world uh, when it comes to implementing contact tracing, first in China and South Korea. Then I will talk about the joint proposal from Apple and Google. Then a few other approaches that we've seen in the world. And then lastly, what's happening right now in the US uh, when it comes to contact tracing. But first of all, what is contact tracing? So essentially, it's, it's a very general term. Uh, and what, what this is, this concept is, is when looking at a population of individuals uh, and some of these individual, individuals have been infected with virus, um, looking at who has been in contact with who in order to figure out which individuals may now be infected, infected by the virus because they were close to someone else who was infected. So that's contact tracing. That's all it is, this, this general idea. So it's not tied to a specific approach or a specific technology. Doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't, it's not related to mobile devices or Bluetooth. Uh, it's just a very general term. Um, um, and we're gonna see how that has been done uh, in the world, but first we'll start with China and South Korea, which took a somewhat similar approach. Um, and the way it works in, in these countries is that citizens have to download and install an application on the phone. Um, and what the application does is that it collects the user's location all the time um, and then sends that data to uh, a central server. Um, you know, and in China, it's uh, the Chinese National Health Commission. In South Korea, it's this government organization called uh, the Korea Center for Disease Control. So the user's location data is sent to uh, that central server, and then the actual contact tracing is done server side by ana analyzing all this location data, uh, and also using additional sources of data, such as credit card records uh, or you know security camera footage. And the goal here is so it's gonna it's done server side to figure out which user run into uh, infected uh, citizens, and if if by doing this tracing one user is uh, found to be at risk, um, potentially infected by running into an infected person, they get notified via a text message or a push notification, and then they have to go either to the hospital or they must stay at home. Um, and so that's kind of how it has been done in these countries, obviously with some differences, but the general idea is that uh, a lot of data, uh, location data is being sent to a central server. Um, obviously that has some privacy implications um, because now, you know, the government ha you know, has the location of all the citizens all the time. And so because of that, uh, other, uh, you know, uh, approaches have been kind of looked into. And so Apple and Google made a, a joint proposal a few weeks ago um, on how to do contact tracing, uh, you know, while trying to, to protect the user's privacy. Um, and so it's going to be released in May as a, an update to iOS and Android in an application. Um, and the way it works is uh, at a high level is the following. So first, uh, you know, the user's phone is going to scan for nearby devices all the time using Bluetooth. Um, every time it runs into another device, meaning you're, you're, you're close to someone else, uh, it's going to store some kind of Bluetooth ID of that other device. Um, and then as a user, if you know you've been infected by a virus, you know, you did the testing and it was positive, you can send 
to a server uh, your device ID, a privacy preserving device ID to, to tell the server, hey, I am infected by this virus and here's my device ID. And then all the users, uh, the, you know, the, the application is regularly downloading that list of device IDs of infected users, downloading it from that central server. Um, and then the app compares that list of known infected users with the list of Bluetooth IDs of devices that they run into, uh, of devices that were near them at some point in the past. Um, there's a lot of details, um, you know, about how this is done, and there's a lot of cryptography involved to preserve the privacy. Uh, and these device IDs and Bluetooth IDs can be compared. Uh, but they don't disclose a lot of information about the users. Uh, and, and especially, it does not allow you as the user to figure out who was infected or uh, who is it you know, that you, know, you run into, so, which is one of the main privacy goals. And so by, by comparing, the, you know, essentially, the, the IDs of the devices that were close to you with the IDs of the devices uh, of users that are known to be infected, it can obviously figure out if you've been in contact with an infected user. And if that's the case, then you get a warning on, the, on your device. And one important thing here is that this warning is only displayed to you on the device. It's not sent to the server. So the server doesn't know that you've been in contact with an infected user. And the warning will tell you to essentially go to the hospital to get tested. Um, so, uh, so someone on GitHub made uh, kind of a sample app to describe, uh, to show how this will work on an iPhone. Uh, and it looks like this. Um, so that's the app doing what I just described. Um, so at the top of it, you can, you, you can see you can control whether tracking is on or off, meaning this, you know, scanning devices that are near you and storing their ID. Um, and then, if you know you've been infected, you can tell the server and send your device ID uh, to be added as the list of to be added to the list of known uh, infected users. That's the "I have COVID-19" button. And then, lastly, you can check your exposure uh, if you haven't been infected. Uh, this is the button you would use uh, to know if you're at risk. Which and it looks like this. Um, like I said, by comparing the list of devices you've been close to with the list of devices of known infected users, it can tell you, hey, at this specific time, you were close to someone who knows has been infected. Um, and then the next steps, again, would be to tell you to go to the hospital. So that's how it works at a very high level. I didn't get into the details about the crypto and and all the technical details, but that's kind of an overview. Um, but the details, of course, are important. Um, but to keep it high level, the main privacy goals, all that crypto that I didn't talk about, why, what's the goal here? Uh, well, it's mainly three things. Uh, and, and you can see that and compare it with the, China, the Chinese and South Korean approach, uh, which, which didn't have these privacy goals. But in this case, with the Apple slash Google proposal, uh, the main privacy goals were that um, the server never has access to your location data. So your device does not send your location to a centralized server. Um, and then, additionally, the server does not know who you were in contact with, uh, who you met with. Um, that's not sent, that data is not sent to the server. And lastly, um, users only share, you know, tell the server that they're infected uh, if they want to. They're not forced to do that. It's really opt-in. If, you know, if you're willing to share that with the server, then it's, this helps everyone, but you don't have to. It's your decision. So that's kind of the main, uh, you know, the, the main goals here when it comes to privacy. Um, there has been other approaches throughout the world. Uh, one, one in Singapore, which is very similar to the Apple Google proposal. Uh, 
and the main thing is that it, it also uses Bluetooth to, to detect nearby devices. Um, and also no location data is sent to a server. So similar privacy um, goals. And then in Europe, there's uh, a proposal called Pan-European Privacy Preserving Proximity Tracing, uh, which is also very similar to the uh, Apple slash Google proposal. Lastly, in the US, um, there's been multiple initiatives, but none of them are, are ready yet. Um, one from uh, the Stanford University, COVID-19 Watch. Uh, another one from the MIT, kind of as a, a proof of concept as well. Um, and all of these approaches are also Bluetooth-based and you know try to protect the user's privacy as much as possible. But none of them ha you know, have been chosen as the one uh, approach that the US is going to take. Uh, and then an interesting one is uh, San Francisco right now, which where, where they implemented something they called back to basics contact tracing, uh, which essentially is kind of the old way of doing contact tracing uh, by just making phone calls uh, to patients who tested positive um, to ask them about their whereabouts and where they've been and if they run into anyone. Um, so that's a, also another way of doing contact tracing. Again, it, contact tracing is a very general uh, concept. Um, and so that was really a high-level overview of contact tracing. And like I said, contact tracing is just a general term, lots of possible implementations. Uh, and they can be different in various ways. Uh, they can be low-tech, like the one in San Francisco we just talked about, uh, or high-tech. Um, another kind of defining aspect is whether you know they require the user's consent or not. Um, and another big potential difference is whether they mostly centralized or mostly decentralized. Um, and the, for example, the Chinese approach is very centralized, uh, but the Bluetooth-based approaches are mainly decentralized. Also, there's still a central server for to store as little data as possible. Um, and the reason why why you know there's all these different approaches is that there's a lot of sensitive data uh, that could be exposed, um, and that needs to be protected, uh, like we just saw. Uh, you know the history of where you've been, your, your location data, uh, the history of who you've been with, who you met with, and lastly, whether you, you've been infected or not. Um, and so, and like we saw, the, the decentralized approaches, which are Bluetooth-based, um, seem promising, promising to really, uh, again, you know, uh, reduced exposure of this sensitive data by just keeping it on the user's device instead of sending everything to, to a server. And that's, uh, that's it for today. So again, a, an overview of what contact tracing is and how it's being done right now as part of the COVID-19 crisis. I hope this was uh, you know, useful in clarifying all these concepts. And uh, I thank you all for watching.